Hello and welcome to this math training video. In this video we're going to continue looking at our subject of fractions. In previous videos we've looked at a whole wealth of information covering lots of different topics on this front. Uh, the last thing we looked at was how to multiply fractions together and we saw that that really could not be easier. So to understand this subject where we're going to be looking at dividing fractions you really need to understand how to multiply fractions together as well. So if you haven't already watched that video please do go back and watch that because it will really help to kind of cement your understanding and reinforce your understanding of this subject. But let's get started on the subject of dividing fractions. So in order to understand how the process that we're going to do in this video works, we need to think first of all just about normal division. So here we've got a simple sum on the screen. What is 6 divided by 2? Now there's two ways that we can think about division. The first way is we can simply think of it as having a number of objects that we're dividing between a number of people. So in this case we've got six pizzas on the screen as you can see here and we're thinking about dividing that between two people. So there's our six pizzas we're going to divide it between two people as you can see here. And what happens is that we just start uh, pairing them off effectively. So we move one pizza to one and then one to the other and we keep going until we've finished up all of the uh, dividing process and you can see that each person has ended up with three pizzas. Well, this is a pretty freaky looking pizza. I'm not sure what uh, topping on a pizza would be blue like that, but there we go. So that's the first way we can think about uh, division uh, in terms of taking a quantity and dividing it between a number of people. But there's another way of thinking about it and this other way is going to be really helpful when it comes to understanding the process of dividing fractions together. So let's go back to the start. Here we've got our six objects. Now the other way that we can think about division is we can think of it as finding out how many groups of this we've got in this. So in other words in this question we're seeing how many groups of two are there in a set of six. So let's think about it. If we start to find uh, kind of groups of two within this number. We've got our six items here and then you can see we've got one group of two there and then we've got another group of two there and then we've got another group of two there. So we've got to the same answer. We st can still see that we're getting three effectively is the answer. Six divided by two is still three but we're thinking about it slightly differently. We're not thinking about dividing it up between two people. We're now thinking how many groups of each uh, item are there within the whole set. Now this really helps us when we start to divide fractions together because if we look at our first question involving fractions and division we've got what is one half divided by one quarter. So what is a half divided by a quarter? So I'll throw it up on the screen there that's how we traditionally write this one half divided by one quarter. Now to understand this we're going to use that principle of how many of this item are there within this set. So let's look at that visually. Again we always want to start thinking in pizza. Whenever we do division I always find it useful to think in terms of pizza. So here we've got a pizza and we're interested in one half of it. So just in the shaded area that's the bit that we're interested in. Here is one half of that pizza so we can ignore this white area here. And we are dividing that by one quarter. So here's another pizza effectively and we've divided it into quarters. We've shaded one of those areas so that is one quarter. And now what we're thinking of because if we try and think of this in the original terms we're, we're going to say uh, we're dividing uh, a, a a half by a quarter of a person. Well how do you divide by a quarter of a person? It just, just doesn't make sense. So what we're going to think of instead is how many of this object are there within this object. Okay, so how many of these uh, kind of orange segments are there within this blue segment? And again, we can draw that out and it's going to help us to understand it. So here we've got our half and we're going to say how many quarters are there in that half? So we've got one quarter there and we've got another quarter there. So you can already see the answer here. We've got two of these items. We've got two of these within this overall larger set here. So the answer to this question is two. So there are effectively two quarters within one half, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. So there's our answer. One half divided by one quarter is equal to two. Now let's just have a look at another example just to reinforce this a little bit more. What is eight twelfths divided by one sixth? 
So we've got 8 twelfths divided by 1 sixth. So again, we'll write it out like this. Now the reason that I always throw this up is that in a moment we're going to start leaving behind this uh, kind of uh, metaphor, this principle, this visual aid that we're using of pizzas and we're going to look at how we can do this calculation without worrying about the kind of pizza element of it. So there you can see we've got our uh, pizza divided into twelfths and we've got eight of those areas shaded. So again, you can count those up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the question now is, how many sixths are there within that eight twelfths? So we've got uh, our second image here, which is one sixth. So you can see we've got our pizza and we've divided it into six parts and we're interested in this one shaded area here. So in other words, what we want to know now is, how many of these green shaded areas will we find within this purple shaded area? What is 8 twelfths divided by 1 sixth? And again, we can look at the process of this. So here you see we've got our original 8 twelfths, and then we're going to divide that by sixths. We're going to find out how many of those there are. So we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can see that that's covering up the same area. So we've got 4 of those sixths within 8 twelfths. And so the answer to this question, 8 twelfths divided by 1 sixth, gives us 4. So that's the answer to this question. There are 4 of those sixths within 8 twelfths. So far, so good. That's looking pretty simple. Now, of course, the challenge arises in that we can't just um, be drawing pictures of pizza and perhaps it kind of won't always be quite this neat and simple when we start doing this kind of calculation whereby we get a whole number answer every time. It's going to get a little bit more complex than that. So let's go back to our first question. What is one half divided by one quarter? And we're going to look at how we can do this just purely with maths now. So we're going to look at how we can do this calculation mathematically. We've got one half divided by one quarter. Now, when I do this kind of calculation where I'm doing um, a division that involves fractions, I always think uh, of the following uh, kind of memory aid. I say that we need to remember that dividing fractions is dumb. Okay, so why is it dumb? Well, so we've got here our first letter in this memory aid, which is divide. So when we are dividing with fractions, we turn the second fraction upside down, upside down, and then we multiply. Okay, then we multiply. And this is how I was taught this by my HNC engineering uh, math teacher, who is one of the best teachers that I've, I've ever known. Uh, she was fantastic, and this has always stuck with me, so hopefully it'll help you as well. So this memory aid dumb helps us to remember that when we divide fractions, we turn the second fraction upside down, and then we multiply. So let's put this into action. So we already know the answer to this question, so if I'm right about this process, then we should see this happen uh, right before our very eyes, and we should get to that answer that we already know we're going to get. So let's follow the process. So we've got a division that involves a fraction. So we leave the first fraction as it is. We turn the second fraction upside down. So that becomes 4 over 1 instead of 1 over 4. We've just flipped it. And then we multiply those two fractions together. And if you remember from the previous video, multiplying fractions is really easy. We just multiply the top two numbers together and then the bottom two numbers together. So 1 times 4 gives us 4 over 2 times 1, which gives us 2. So we've got 4 over 2 and 4 divided by 2, I don't need to tell you, will give us an answer of 2. So this process has worked. We've moved uh, from thinking in terms of pizza to now we've got a method where we can do this calculation really quickly and easily with this little trick. Let's look at our next question. So this was the second question that we illustrated using pizza. And we're now going to uh, have a think about performing this one purely mathematically. So we've got 8 twelfths divided by 1 sixth. So all we've got to do is uh, we've got a uh, division that involves fractions. So we're going to turn the second fraction upside down. So let's write it out. We've got 8 over 12. And then we're going to turn the second fraction upside down. So we've got 6 over 1. And then we're going to multiply those two together. So we've got, uh, again, we just multiply the top two numbers. So that's 8 times 6, which is going to give us 48. 
and you may be able to race ahead of me now and see what the answer is going to be. We've got 12 multiplied by 1, which is going to give us 12. So we've got 48 over 12. And if you do 48 divided by 12, you'll find you get the answer of 4, which corresponds perfectly to what we saw explained visually earlier on. So that is the simplest method of uh, dividing fractions together. So if you get a division uh, that involves fractions, all you do is turn the second fraction upside down, multiply the numbers together, cancel it down until you get it into the simplest form, and you'll come out with the correct answer. So that brings this video to an end. What we're going to look at in the next video is, as usual, just a list of uh, kind of practice questions for you to have a go at, and then I'll work through the answers uh, for you to see if you've followed the process correctly, you'll be able to self-evaluate that. If you're completely comfortable with this, as always, feel free to skip that next video and move on to the following subject where, again, we take it up a notch. We start looking at what happens when we start adding fractions together and subtracting fractions uh, where it gets a little bit trickier. It's kind of the opposite to uh, the rest of maths in that, in that the addition and subtraction is harder than the multiplication and the division. So that's all uh, quite interesting. So there we go. That's the simplest method of dividing fractions. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.